Hello everyone, welcome to Glory Talk. Today is March 4, 2024, welcome. I got some really good stuff for you today. Um, if you've been enduring attacks lately, um, get, ready to get, get ready to be set free, all right? Get ready to be set free, God's had enough. But we know that that's going on right now. I've actually experienced it too. So uh, yeah, the devil cannot win this. He will not win this. So, all right, let's pray first. Lord God Almighty, thank you for everything you've done. You are worthy to be praised. Bless your holy name. You know everything. You know what's coming. And you are going to be victorious over the devil. The battle belongs to you. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, God the Father. Lord, I ask that we that we hear everything we're supposed to hear from you and that we can implement everything you want us to do and, and to hear, to put it into our lives. And we know that the, the devil has lost. So I ask that we stand on your word. We stand on you. We, we, we let you fight our wars. Yes, because the battle belongs to you. And may we receive everything you want us to hear and, and see and, and, and just put into our lives so that we are victorious with you for your kingdom and your power and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. So I got this um, word today. I, I hear God and uh, I get downloads and also I hear him. And so I write them down. So today was the day. Uh, uh, March 4th, 2024. I actually heard this morning, and this is very urgent. I know that a lot of people need to hear this right now, and that's what God was prompting me to do, so I'm going to get this out. All right, praise God. So you, so you have something, um, you know, a little bit of something in what we're going to talk about today and what God's talking about today, and it's about we've endured enough of the attacks, and we have been set free. We've been delivered, healed, and we're going to be free from all this this junk that's being um, thrown at us right now. Amen. And this is what he said. Amen. Let's go. All right. God said, everything that has not been done will be done. I will complete what I have started. My will be done. He said, don't fall away to sin. The deception is real. Keep the faith in me. I am the real thing. And he said, for the wage of sin and its man's ways are fleeting. They will not win. The sin will overtake you if you succumb to it. So he's saying, remember, this is all going to be passing away very soon. Um, the attacks are really severe right now. I know for myself, I've been attacked pretty severely at times, you know, in, in my mind. And it's like, wow, it's crazy. And um you know, we just have to come against it, just like the, the Lord says in his word. And he says, and I also was trying to figure out a little bit more about what he was talking about here about that. And it was more about if you let the sin win in your life, you're going to submit to it. You're going to yield to it. It's going to be an overwhelming desire to give up and to give in to it. And I'm encouraging you guys not to give in to sin, not to give in to those things that the devil keeps throwing at you. I tell you, he's, it's been... It's been relentless lately for myself, and it's it's one more thing that um, I've just had to be diligent. It's like, okay, Lord, this is this is pretty serious, and so I was just like going, wow, it's coming at me again. I it, that thought was there again. It's like, no, get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. Yeah, you just have to do it, and remember, even in your sleep, you have to tell it, get out of here in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and then he said, if you let sin in, you will not win. He said, the desires of the flesh are strong and will take, let do, let's do that again. If you let sin in, you will not win. The desires of the flesh are strong and will overtake you. And he said, resist, stand strong, and the devil will flee from you. And you know, that's in James 4, 7. That led me to James 4, 7. I'm going to get that. I'm being led to do that. James 4, 7. This is the Amplified Version. And it says there in James 4, 7, this is the Amplified Version. So submit to the authority of God. And it says right here, resist the devil 
Stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Praise God. All right, so let's do the next one. He said, a last strike of harassments from the devil has been released. And that's what God was, you know, that's what I was telling you before. And that's what God was reminding us again. It is not what it seems. You have not lost this battle. So it, it feels pretty intense for myself. I'm just saying. And he said, the devil wants you to believe that. He is not victorious. You are victorious, a winner in me. Amen. He said, your enemy has no power to win over you. It is fleeting. And so he was telling you, it's going to pass away. It's going to pass swiftly away from you, you know? All right. And then he said, put the devil under your feet. He will not defeat you. And so that's also in the scripture. And that's Romans 16, 20. Let me get that. And that, I'm going to do the amplified version of that. Romans. Yes. And that is Romans 16, 20. It says right here, it says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Oh, praise God. That's a good one. That's a good one. I got to remember that one for later. Mm. All right. And then he said, I will correct this last effort from the devil. He has already lost this war. He is desperate. And God said, he will not win no more. This is this is going to be something that's going to, it's going to be a pretty big deal. We're going to notice that he's just not going to win these things anymore, especially what we see around us. And it's he said, the battle belongs to me, just like my word says, come unto me and I will shelter you. Come, and, come under my covering. My son Jesus paid that price. So I wanted to I wanted to stop because that reminded me of first Jam, let's see, first Samuel 17, 45 through 47. It's really important here. And I wanted to, to let you guys know that's the Old Testament, but it was really, really well described. And that's first Samuel. I've got it marked here. Hold on a second. All right. 17, 45 through 47. This one I really liked how it was uh it was talking about it. And it, he said. And this is from 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. And it says, number 46, This day the Lord will hand you over to me. There you go. And I will strike you down and cut off your head. I will... Give the corpse of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And this is 47. And that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. See, the battle belongs to the Lord. Wow, I like that one. Praise God. All right, so I'm going to continue here where he was talking about this. And he was talking about, he says, come, un, come unto me, I will shelter you. Come under my covering, my son Jesus, my son Jesus paid that price. He won the war on the cross and raised again to take care of all your sin. This is your victory, your covering, your peace, your everything. And so I, 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 I've got a lot of scripture here because this one was really good. This is from um, Amplified Version. It's 1 John 2, 1, 2, and 3. And I think that's, uh, yeah, Amplified Version. I'm going to say, I'm going to read that one to you. I also like how they, they wrote this. 1 John 2, 1, 2, and 3. All right. And it says here, this is from the Amplified Version. It's about Christ being our advocate. It said, my little children, believers, dear ones, I am writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate who will intercede for us with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the upright, the just one, who conforms to the Father's will in every way, in every way, purpose, thought, and action. 
I love that part. And it says in number two, and he, that same Jesus, is the appropriation for our sins, the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature, our worldly, let me get that right, our worldliness, our lifestyle, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. And this is number three. I thought this was good too. And this is how we know daily by experience that we have come to know him, to understand him and be more deeply acquainted with him if we habitually keep focus on his precepts and obey his commandments. And it says teachings. Amen. That's really good. That's, I love that description. And then he said, he paid the full price. And this is Jesus. He paid the full price, the sacrifice, so you could live free from sin. There you go. Believe him. Believe what he did for you. He is your savior, the only one. He will set you free. He said, bring everything to me. Set your burdens at my feet. I will deliver you. You will be free. And he said, I love you. Be at peace. I will set you free. Believe in me, your father, God. Amen. All right, that was that's really good. I I needed to hear this too this morning, and I'm sure you guys need to hear it hear it too. It was so comforting to wake up to that this morning because I was being um, attacked in my sleep, and it just became such a comfort that God was telling me these things, you know. And I, I even though I knew it. It was hard for me to um, come out of my sleep and, and have that happening to me. And so it was just, yeah, you have to really get focused again. Okay, where is my focus? What does the word say? What does God say? You know, you have to get focused again because it was, it was, it was pretty bad. And so it was like a fight. I, I thought it was like a fight. So it was pretty intense. So he wanted me to get this out to you guys too, besides myself. And... Um, I'm going to wait on the Holy Spirit here and be guided by the Holy Spirit to see where we're going to go. There's something there's a, there's something about what he wants to talk about here and it's about you know, don't be afraid. Don't think this is the end. God has taken care of this. It's just a last barrage of of the devil trying to make it look like he's still in control and in charge, but he's not. He's already lost the battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. We are victorious over all of this already. God wants you to know that. We are victorious. We are victorious. We are victorious. He has won the war, and he sent his son Jesus to do that. He has won that war. So if you need Jesus in your life, all you got to do is ask him in your life. You say, Lord, oh, yes, just say, say with your words, because he's wanting you to come to you again and again and again and again, a repentance lifestyle. Yes, some people have already been saved, but they keep falling back into sin. All you have to do is say, okay, Lord, please help me get back where I need to be. Please, I renounce the junk that I was doing back then. I renounce the things that I was falling back into again. I want to do what's right. I want to do the right thing. I want to know you. And all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me because you're under the repentance lifestyle. You're no longer under sin once you ask Jesus in your life and you ask forgiveness of sins. So you keep that repentance lifestyle going, just like it says in the word. And all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Say it with your words. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry I sinned. I acknowledge what you did, Jesus. You died on that cross and you sacrificed for me. And the, the word says, so I die to sin and live for righteousness. So that we die to sin and live for righteousness. Just like the word says, praise God. And all you got to do is say, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I want you in my life. I repent. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you took all the sin that, yes, from everywhere, from us, from the whole world, and you died on the cross with it. You took it in your body, just like the word says. So we die to sin and live for righteousness. 
And Lord, forgive me, forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, and I ask you into my life. I believe in you. I want you in my life. I believe in you. And now you're what? A child of God. You're a child of God. And come back to him. Come back to him. If you have to come back to him, keep coming back to him over and over and over until you get this right, until you actually be delivered from something that's just constantly messing you up. All you have to do is look at it and say, no, you're sin. I'm going to walk away from you. I'm going to flee from you. I'm going to walk the other direction. And that's what you do when you see, and God did that one time for me. He just explained it to me one time. He says, next time you see sin, and you know what it is, look at it and say, uh-uh, nope. Turn around and walk away from it every time. That's all you got to do. You will be victorious. Praise God. All right. So welcome, new children of God. Go tell somebody that's a believer. Tell them that you're a new Christian. It's great. And, and just share God, the Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ to everyone around you. Do your part. Amen. Amen. All right. So remember, you guys, I'm going to say a blessing. You can speak God's word over everyone. And so um, when you ask Jesus in your life, excuse me, you receive a deposit of the anointing of Jesus Christ in your life. And so you can release that to everyone, just like it says in the word. So I'm going to release the anointing of Jesus Christ on you. There you go. And now you receive it and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. You're going to get it anyway. And you can do that to everyone and everything. And that way, when people come across it, they get it. And when it's, and then when you, you say that over their lives, they get it. You can do it through texts, emails, whatever, you know, phone calls. Just do it. And it goes through. Yes, it is. It is great. It's it's It comes. Wow. How do we say this, Lord? When you receive a deposit anointing of Jesus Christ in your life, and you have it in your life, it's your greatest weapon against all those things. It's your greatest weapon against sickness, disease, infirmity, demonics, and yokes, and illnesses, and strongholds, and you name it. And it just puts Christ right first and center in everybody's life. And then that'll keep working on them, just like a seed you plant, until they actually come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So I love you guys. This is a great little short video. So thank you for listening. And until next time, I'll see you later. Goodbye.